I do that? <laughs> Yay! Okay, welcome to my car. It's a bit cold. I'm doing a little, not road trip necessarily, just driving around a little bit. And I'm gonna take you with me. So, come in. Of course, my, my window is completely fogged up. So, yeah, I have to wait. It's now, I hope you can see this. It's beyond half past 11. And yeah, road trip with Minnie. ago I bought some pumpkins and I had them in the car so they would be good longer and it still smells like pumpkin in here I, I have them inside uh, one of them is actually right now uh, cooling down because he was in the oven <laughs> for some cake for tomorrow it's a pumpkin cake hold on I need to switch gears this is going to be interesting. I tried to uh, get my 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 uh, tripod, my small one, a couple days ago when I tried to somehow get it to stick here. It didn't work. And now when I try to take it with me to at least have a better hold of my phone, I couldn't find it anymore. So yeah. Uh, I hope every shot is more or less in frame, but yeah, this is going to be an adventure. I am also on multiple painkillers right now, uh, because of course I started my period today, at least it wasn't yesterday while I was still in the cinema. <laughs> uh, my periods this year had always in interesting timing always in the most unfortunate moments of my life but uh, oh well the end of my period was while we were on the summer breeze my period began half an hour before we were supposed to leave for the wedding of uh, Venmar and Quest half an hour before that I know it's probably TMI, but at this point, I don't care, frankly. I am currently driving to our first destination, and I remember when this road was built, when it was still fairly new, when Norris and I came together, we like to go on little, yeah, midnight drives, just chilling, listening to music, talking about, like you would say in German, God and the world, <laughs> God and the Welt, about everything and nothing. Slowly, the feeling of nostalgia settles in. I remember when uh, we first came together, he still had, uh, oh God, a 97, I think? Volkswagen Polo, a blue one, Chagall Blue, and its name was uh, Günther. It wasn't the fastest one, but got you where you needed to go. And I still remember him. I still miss him sometimes. It was a good car. It was a very good car. We are now at my old college. We made it to Essling, which is uh, basically in front of Stuttgart. Look at that. That is my old college, which I went to for three semesters for Kamsai, a place where 
my downfall <laughs> began. After the specialty program at our um, government issued thing about the Arbeitsagentur, I ended up going to college because I couldn't find an apprenticeship that would take me. Nobody would take me for multiple years. I graduated high, high school in 2013, which is now over 10 years. And I started going to college in 2017. So for four years, I applied to so many jobs, to so many companies small businesses, whatnot, from various different apprenticeships, nobody would take me. I've written over 150 applications and 150 times someone saying, no, we don't want you. It messes with you. It really does. After that, I went to a program to learn to present myself better, to maybe um, sell myself better. Nobody wanted me. I didn't have absolutely horrible grades. They weren't good, but not the worst of the worst. Plus, I have plus I had a pretty high graduation status here in Germany, but still, nobody wanted me. And eventually, I slipped into college because I didn't have to apply for it. Well, I have to, had to apply for it, but I didn't have to sell myself to them. So they would take me. Yeah, that's how I landed here. In Compsai. And I failed miserably. After the first semester, I was pretty sure I wasn't going to make it. I sometimes showed up in the second semester because I felt like a failure even more so all the time. In the third semester I barely showed. And that's when I said, okay, this is... I am actually miserable. This was a horrible idea. And after that I started therapy, which was a semi-good idea. It was a good idea to start therapy, but my therapist was a piece of shit. A xenophobic piece of shit. I am kind of tempted to walk the grounds one last time. One last time. The fuck. One more time. There we go. But uh, I'm not about to film myself while trespassing. Also, oh no, I will not trespass. This is where it all started. The beginning of the end. This this college really put me at a very dark spot and I still haven't clawed my way out of it, which is now six years ago, seven years ago. I just felt absolutely inferior and useless. I couldn't keep up. The speed which they demanded for me to learn stuff, completely new stuff, was astronomical. I came out of a chemical um, food science background, not mathematical, not technical. It was my hobby, my passion. I liked the topic, but I wasn't nearly as much in it as I needed to be for, it, for me to be able to study comp sci. Not only did I fuck myself over in uh, basically destroying my psyche. I also learned a valuable lesson to uh, maybe take things slow. The pizza here was good. Like, the food was actually good. I also was the only uh, female presenting person in, in, my, uh, in my semester. In the second semester, uh, in some courses, I had another girl join me. But yeah, in the first semester, it was just me. In Germany, we call a sausage party. When, us, when some are mainly or only men, it's a sausage party. A Würstchen party. Some professors also were pretty nasty to me. 
I don't know why. Was it misogyny? Was it sexism? I don't know. Not my best decision. Sometimes it was really fun. I don't know the English wording for that. And my faculty? Of comp sci, like, you, you have different courses in your faculty. In my overall faculty, we had, like, a faculty club, which I had joined, and that was pretty fun. We organized different meetings, different parties, and uh, while I didn't always participate in said meetings or parties... I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't turn the light out on me, <laughs> because... Even back then, I was pretty shy and introverted. It was still fun planning, though. The, the, the first one I remember, um, I helped planning. Uh, they uh, like to set up like a little um, coffee and cake and tea uh, thingamabobber once a month. And when I first joined, and the first one I helped plan, uh, when they asked who was going to bake the cake this time, when I suggested I would bake one, the way they looked at me. <laughs> you can bake? Yeah, I can. You can't? <gasps> we always just bought the cake. But if you could bake one, that was, that would be cool. It was so cute. It was actually a pumpkin pie. <laughs> Like, tomorrow I want to bake a pumpkin cake, so that's why the uh, pumpkin has been baking, so I have the, uh, the pumpkin paste. Funny <laughs> how that comes full circle. That was fun, actually. The classes, the, uh, the learning environment was very toxic. Very toxic. At least for me. It's as an IT-based female student, former female student, it was very toxic. I don't miss it. <laughs> Funnily enough, in our club, I was pretty well received, me as a person. But in my classes, no. The clubs I miss classes? No. The teachers, the professors? No. Definitely not. All the students that were in my semesters? No. The older ones? They were cool. When I started to show less, they uh, realized what was happening and uh, they tried helping me. But I was just... I already had missed so much stuff that I so much of the basics that I needed to know for me to pass that, uh, yeah. In the end, I just said, you know what? Put it in the fucking bucket, I'm off. Bye bye Also, driving here was weird. Like I said, I haven't been here in six years. I started 2017. I quit 2018. So yeah, five years ago. It's been five years. Uh, Still have some books at home. I thought about driving to the mental institution, hospital, thingamabobber I was at as well, but yeah, I'm not going to take this trip at this unholy hour. I also don't think I'm going to make it in time for a certain thing I wanted to do, but yeah, it's half past 12. We are officially 30 now. Technically 30 would be at 1.15, if I remember correctly. 1.15 a.m. But yeah, I don't think I'm going to make it in time where I need to go. Good lord, fix your streets. So yeah, this is basically what this whole video here is about. Me driving around, just reminiscing, getting nostalgic, getting uh, pissed off at certain things. This, this was maybe not the brightest idea, but it was an idea. 
so I had to do it. The thing with therapists, <laughs> I'm going. I'm gonna go a little bit of a ramble here. The thing with therapists is, you basically trust them the first time you work with one. And it wasn't my absolute first time I worked with therapists in my life. I worked with psychologists when I was 10, when I had my uh, ADHD diagnosis. And even back then, I somehow knew that that's, that shit's fucked. Oh dear. <laughs> I never drove by here. Why is it so foggy? But yeah. Damn, dude. That's so pretty. Hi, Moon. Hi, Moon. That's... that's nice. <laughs> it's really cold outside. Eight degrees. <sighs> yeah, oh yeah, therapists. <laughs> I've had some pretty bad experiences with therapists and psychologists in my life. The first one always blamed me for everything that went wrong in my life. Remember, I was ten. Ten. He blamed me that my parents were always angry at me. He blamed me that uh, they had issues with my sister. They blamed my sister's problems at me because uh, I don't know. But yeah, he he was a, he was an asshole. Like a year ago, I looked him up because someone I knew. Uh, thought about taking a kid to him and uh, I don't even know he still practice but yeah he still practices also is apparently an expert on kids with ADHD and I'm just thinking to myself yeah fuck off I had horrible experiences with him then my uh, <laughs> the racist slash xenophobic uh, therapist that I went after college to uh, she basically blamed everything on my parents being Polish my whole upbringing and everything that went wrong was because uh, my parents were Polish and I had a Polish upbringing not going back to her Jesus Christ that's a fast cat holy shit That one zoomed across the street. Therapists are a thing you have to take with a grain of salt. Listen to them, but not too closely. <laughs> it's it's like uh, in divination, like tarot cards and such. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Same protocol with uh, therapists. Take what resonates leave what doesn't because if you take everything and don't leave anything you're going to take yourself into a pretty dark place mentally I'm a bit afraid that this video will be uh, what fucked many mentally up and I don't want that I want to reminisce I want to Remember, I want to talk to you about life. But if your life's been pretty fucked up, it's kind of hard not to talk about it. So I'm very sorry if I'm being a negative nanny right now. Oh, come on. I'm the only one here. Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? The whole car moved. That's how fast he drove by. My whole car moved. 
move this his of course moved very fast you know some people ask me um, hey how did she get this accent because uh, as you maybe know I'm German and I pretty much speak all, also German without an accent because German wasn't my first language. My first language was Polish. Most Polish people I meet that live here in Germany have a pretty strong Polish accent. I don't have that. I also don't necessarily have a German or Polish accent when speaking English. And I'd like to think it's because how I learned those languages. I didn't really learn German until I was in kindergarten when I was free. The only sentence I could say in German when I came, when I got into kindergarten was I need to go to the toilet, <laughs> which, which was pretty essential. <laughs> but besides that, I didn't really speak any German because my parents were pretty fresh here in Germany. They didn't know German as well yet. And I didn't really have any contact to German people. I was mostly still in Poland. I was born here in Germany, don't get me wrong. But I was still pretty often in Poland with my grandparents. And uh, yeah, I barely got to learn any German. But I learned it in kindergarten from somebody who doesn't have an accent. And at that time, also, for some reason, they pushed the, um, you have to speak clean German pretty hard in kindergarten. And in, um, in uh, what, what would you call it? Junior high school? Like grades 1 to 4. They pushed the agenda pretty hardly to not speak in our local dialect, to speak clean German. And now I barely even have a dialect. Comparatively, a very light dial dialect. Like if you know Norse, he can have a pretty strong dialect if he doesn't watch it. <laughs> And that, even that, in some apprenticeship interviews, like in two, the employers, potential employers, asked me how I grew up here and have almost no dialect, how that happened. And that's because they pushed it in kindergarten in the first years of school to have no dialect. And because at home, I didn't learn any dialect either. <laughs> so, um, plus, when I first learned English in class 5 or 6, I started, I don't remember exactly, I think in class 6th grade, our English teacher was, um, also had almost no dialect. We learned with, like, listening modules by British kids. Later on my uh, another English teacher were, had been to England for a couple of years and therefore developed an, a British accent herself and I'd like to think I picked that up from them. Also <laughs> when I learned Italian in grades 11 through 13 I had an Italian teacher for uh, two years and then in the last year we had another Italian teacher, a new one, and she told me I speak with almost no German accent, but with some weird like, Italian dialect. And again, I picked that up from my Italian teacher. So yeah. That's how you get weird dialects in your languages. At least I do. I learn them. <laughs> oh.
Also, my English is kind of weird. Like uh, the, the accent that I have. Because when I was in London for three or four for three or four weeks, people asked me if I was Irish a couple of times. One asked if I was Australian. And I think the Australian fits the best. <laughs> like it, it it was British used to be British but it's uh, been away from home for a while <laughs> it's it's not clean British god damn it why don't I see anything the moon is out why is it so dark it shouldn't be people in the 20s often like to say it's the time when they discovered themselves when they figured everything out I didn't do that I yes I discovered many things about myself. I don't know if I can ascribe that to being 20 or just uh, being more on the internet and seeing more people and being able to identify with different kind of cultures or mental illnesses, whatever you may call it. The 20s may be about discovering yourself, but your 30s I'd like to think your 30s are about living the truth. The 20s are about discovering your truth and the 30s are about living it for the first time. The 20s are getting so romanticized. Yet mine were a complete shit show. Well, not utter completely, but you know, like 90%. I got tossed around in the world and got disappointed so often. I've been rejected so many times that I now feel like I don't deserve anything good coming my way. You know that uh, the, the shark, the Blahai uh, video on TikTok that I made that's gone semi-viral and accumulated over quarter million views. I still don't believe that I deserved that because I didn't put any work in and it was just luck. I got lucky. And because nothing came of it. I didn't gain any subscribers. I didn't get any additional orders from my shop. The video was on the account of my shop on TikTok. Nobody uh, looked at my bio, nobody looked at my shop. I didn't gain any uh, views on Etsy, nothing. Nothing came of it. That's why my brain is just saying, yeah, you got lucky, but that's it. Feeling of not, to, of not deserving something. Of not deserving something good. It just sucks. It's heartbreaking because if if a friend of mine experienced that and said, "Hey, you don't deserve that. I didn't deserve that." It's just uh, it was based on luck. Yes, it was based on luck. But you can still you still deserve to be happy about it. You got lucky, but I can't say that to myself. At least I can't believe it. I can't believe that sentiment for it, for myself. We have arrived at our second destination. <laughs> My second high school. Uh, Germany has a weird school system. Also, it, it differs from um, from state to state. So uh, yeah. <laughs> So this was basically where I got my highest college degree with speci specialization in chemistry and um, food sciences. I don't know the English word for that. We're going backwards. That was not my intention. They, they made a new building. That's nice. The old one where was really old, like 60s old. It, it, it wasn't pretty. Uh, that was an interesting time. This is when I uh, 
when uh, Norse and I met. Norse and I met when I was in 11th grade, when I was 17. I thought I had made some good friends here, but uh, I, I thought I made some good friends for life. But we don't really talk anymore. Plus, I think one not hated me, but maybe he hated me. I think he uh, treated me differently for some reason. I don't know if it, if he was just being ableist or whatever, but looking back at it, the way he talked to me, he, the way he behaved around me, it was always off when I was there. And I don't know what to make of it <laughs> to this day, but whatever. Again, mixed mixed experiences with, with uh, this one. And again, I am not going to trespass. I'm not going to film myself trespass and I'm not going to trespass. Again, mixed mixed experiences. But that's life, right? Life will always be uh, the good and the bad, no matter where you go. So you will always have some experiences of both, of both kinds. But it's always the bad one that shape you the most. I wonder if they fix the, the new building. Like, not that that new, so it was pretty new when I got into the school. I was like one or two years old. They just built it and it had so many issues. Like, the, the heating wouldn't work. It had a weird, weirdly automated, like, um, automated blinds system that when, um, the sun would come out, they would close, but Sometimes they closed without the sun and sometimes we are blinded because they didn't close and it it leaked when uh, some heavy storms passed through uh, there were leaks everywhere I wonder if they fixed that by now I graduated here in 2013 so that's 10 years ago now and I already didn't go to my reunion from my middle school because uh, of stuff that happened there. I was pretty badly bullied, like pretty badly. And I, at first I thought maybe I should go to just um, show, hey, I'm not a coward, here I am. I'm not afraid of you anymore. But on the other hand, who am I proving that to? Not to myself. Do I need to prove it to them? Do I care about that? No. So I didn't, so I didn't go. Now I'm thinking, would I go to a reunion if my class from this school would set up one? And I don't know, honestly. Because I, I've met some cool people here. Like, genuinely cool people that I still follow on some socials. We don't really talk, but I still follow them, follow their lives. The cafeteria and this one was tiny like itty bitty tiny with more than uh, three or four classes at once went to have a break in it it was packed and this is like uh, multiple schools in one building so there are an s load of classes that happen all at the same time there were so many people there for so many different things and the I don't know who thought about making the cafeteria so tiny as it was. And now that I'm seeing the new building, maybe they made it finally bigger. I really hope they did. For the sake of all, for all the students there. Because, good lord. Like, take the smallest McDonald's, you know. That's the cafeteria that we had there. I am officially 30 now. I hope you can see that. I'm a bit late, but at 1.15 in the a.m. on November 2nd, 1993, I was born. Um, a man, not a wise man, a man once said, I want to go into my 30s, eyes wide open. And I like that sentiment and I want to live up to it. So that's that's basically the whole premise of this video. Me being awake for when I turn 30. You know, for all the shit that I've experienced, I've had, I've had some good memories. I don't necessarily always remember them. 
But I had good experiences in my life. But in the overall fuckery that is my life, they seem sometimes pretty small. And that's sad. And I hate that. I don't know if I'm right now able to change anything about that. Anyway, let's go. Driving through a village at night is <laughs> is its own it's its very own horror trope, I like to think. Because oh my god. I uh recently had to drive through a village at night and it uh, suddenly became so foggy and one of uh, the street lamps started to flicker and good lord I thought for a second I, I got into Simon Hill. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, that's village life for you. Nothing. And nothing can be exactly what you need. But sometimes, just a teeny tiny bit of excitement. Over there, this was my form of excitement. A billiard, a pool uh, club. <laughs> the, the most exciting thing in my village. We are now in my village where I grew up. And I'm not going to dox myself. At least I will try to. As an adult, it's kind of like it's it's kind of weird. It feels weird. We have arrived at the last stop of our road trip. My middle and first part of high school. Driving up here was weird because this is the school I went to for the longest time. I went here to from. 5th to 10th grade, which basically means for 6 years. Whoa, what, what a shit show it was. I had some amazing teachers. At first I had some amazing friends that later turned out to be uh, pretty shit kids. Basically my, my, my whole class, like we had one set class and we would go to different class topics together. I was the bullied one, I was the weird one, I was the, the emo kid. I had one teacher especially. I don't even know if he's still alive. Because when I graduated he was already pretty, pretty old. He was my German and art teacher. He got me and he was pretty nice to me even now retrospectively looking at how he treated me, it was not like in a weird way, it was really like a good mental way. He obviously was smart and he knew more than me, but he still cared about what I was thinking. And even after I graduated, the, the ones that uh, graduate 10th grade get to leave school like a week early or something. This whole week I didn't that I didn't have to go to school here after I graduated. I still came just to see him and to talk to him about different stuff. He really he really helped me through some stuff. Again, not in a weird predatory way or something, but really like in a mental teachery kind of way, in a good teachery kind of way. And I hope he has helped many many other kids like me the weird ones the mentally ill ones the artsy ones that don't fit into the system that is built bitch don't <laughs> what the fuck car just turned on but don't f yeah but yeah all the artsy kids that don't fit into this capitalistic world this was, by the way, a religious, like a Catholic school. I don't have the best uh, relationship to Catholicism these days. So, yeah, that went well. But yeah, look at, looking back at what 
I wanted to achieve, what I wanted to do at this stage of my life. It's kind of weird looking back. I was 15 or 16 when I graduated. It, the idea that was also implanted into me to have a f one final goal throughout your whole life or the beginning of your life. And if you achieve that one goal, you basically did win life. Like, have a house, have a family, marry, kids, whatever. And after that, your life is over? I don't know. Like, it's it's still ingrained into me as well. <laughs> I, I'm not going to be too preachy about it. Now, looking at it, goals change. Life changes. You change all the time. And to pinpoint success onto just a few big things in life retrospectively seem weird to me like i still know where i want to go from here i still have also some big big goals like my own house my own maybe my own homestead even i i still want to move like i still want to change i need to change because right now where i am i'm not happy but even if I somehow, someday, end up where I want to be now, it won't necessarily mean that that will be the end of my journey. And I don't think that should mean the end of anybody's journey when they achieve the big thing. Because there will always be change in the world, in you. I don't think we should feel bad about having the urge to move on even if we find the big thing. Even if we achieve the big thing. It's always okay to, okay to want more. Or to want something different. It doesn't always have to be more. And more doesn't always equal better. Sometimes more can be too much. And that's a whole other, a whole other topic that I'm going into. It's getting late. <laughs> the big free, the big kuhuna. And like I said, I know where I want to go, but I still have to figure out some details how to get there. Because, like I said, I never got an apprenticeship. I never finished college. I, I don't really have any perspective in life right now. And I need to figure out how to get that. It would be perfect if the whole YouTube or online shop thing would <laughs> turn out to be pretty lucrative. A, a man once said, those are things anyone could, can do, but not everybody. Not everybody is able to do YouTube, but anybody could do it. It would be pretty cool if I could be in this anybody group of people. I don't need to be everybody. I just need to be somebody. I don't need to be big. Just big enough. And again with the with the train of thought. Then I will be happy. Probably not. There is so much more to happiness than just uh, being big somewhere on some social media platform or money. A house. You have to be okay with yourself. But these days, happiness can be very heavily tied to money, so... Just... If I could just be big enough to be happy. That's a dangerous mindset. <laughs> anyway. It's getting late. I'm rambling absolute and utter bullshit. It was almost 2am. Good lord. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was... That was needed. I needed to ramble again. And it was weird visiting all the places again. Weirdly enough, it was all like academic stuff, like schools in my college. I'm gonna go. I'm 30 now. It's still, it's still weird. <laughs> okay, that might be a bit TMI, as, like actually. But I didn't expect to live past 16. So now being 30 is a bit of a mindfuck. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Apparently my car wants me to leave as well. So 
I'm gonna drive home now and uh, I'll see you in the next one, I guess. Whatever it may be. Bye-bye.